Hi, my name is Alec DeLulo, CAD Specialist for Glidewell Laboratories. Welcome to this episode of CAD CAM Tools, Tips and Tricks. Today we're talking about custom abutment design. To start the abutment design, begin by right-clicking the desired file and select Modify Option. This will bring up the order form where the restoration specifics are chosen. Tooth number, material, restoration type, and so on. This screen will be seen before designing any material on 3-shape dental designer. The case is shown for a titanium abutment on tooth number 30. When the restoration is left click, the abutment options can be seen on the right side. Material, implant system used, and diameter. Be sure to select the correct information based on the compatibility of the implant and the restoration. For this case, we'll be using the titanium Biomet 3i 4.1mm. Once satisfied with the selections, it is important to check the auto-filled information by clicking the green plus sign menu to the right. Under the group drop-down, be sure to select ungroup, as grouping is only used for bridges. Click OK on the bottom right of the screen to continue. Return to the file and right click, then select model. This will open the design stage of the program. The scan model will appear as well as a glowing orb for every implant. Here we only have one. All that is needed here is to left click on the buccal tissue at the implant site, then click OK on the bottom left. An insertion direction will appear with the scan abutment. Since the angulation of the abutment in a later step will determine the actual insertion direction, this page can be skipped by clicking OK to continue to the next page. The initial design setup will appear, ready to be modified to the patient's mouth and implant position. With the parametric button on the left clicked, expand the settings tab below. In the first drop down menu under settings, select custom abutment. This will make the designing process easier than the robotic abutment selection. On the second drop down menu, you'll see a list of stock designs to use. The artificial selection has yielded the best results for our lab. Since this case is a first molar, we're looking for a nice square shape. This can be achieved by moving the square top cap and margin sliders to the right. The triangular top cap and margin sliders should be used on anterior designs. A mix of the triangular and square sliders can yield a good base design for a premolar. Below the sliders is the chamfer size selector. Six tenths of a millimeter is the standard size we use here at the lab, but it can be changed in real time by clicking up or down on the screen arrow buttons. Below that, we have the screw hole toggle to view the abutment with or without the screw hole. This enables you to get a good idea of what the final abutment would look like. In the top bar, there are three tools that are best left activated throughout the whole design. They allow visibility of real-time measuring. On the right side of the screen, there are transparency handles that allow you to view each component on the on-screen design, independent of one another. The opposing arch, screw, implant, and scan abutment can all be shown or hidden with the sliders. Now from the occlusal view, the abutment can be adjusted by clicking and dragging on the orange, purple, and blue spherical handles. From the occlusal view, dragging the orange handles allows you to rotate the abutment. After the rotation is correct, move to a buckle view and drag all the orange handles down to the implant surface. Once that is done, Grab the larger purple handle at the occlusal surface and drag that down as well. 
This will allow for better viewing of the working area by starting small and building up. Grab the mesial orange handle and drag it up to half a millimeter below the tissue level, indicated by a black line. Do this for the distal orange handle as well. Next, move the buckle handle to a millimeter below the tissue and the lingual handle half a millimeter below the tissue. To change the emergence profile, put the cursor on the orange handles and scroll with the mouse wheel. Changes in the margin depth can be made incrementally by clicking and dragging the smaller red handles along the margin. If the shoulder is too narrow in some areas, go to the occlusal view and click and drag the small red handles as well as the orange handles outwards. From a side view, the abutment can be made taller by clicking either one of the purple handles and dragging upwards. The small handle makes sharper cuss tips as you drag upwards, while the larger handle maintains your current design as it is dragged upward. The abutment can be angled by clicking and dragging the large purple handle. You can angle the abutment buccal lingually while viewing from the mesial or distal, or mesial distally by viewing from the buccal or lingual. You can move the body walls of the abutment with the blue handles. On the mesial, distal, buccal, and lingual sides, put the cursor on the blue handles and scroll with the mouse. This will taper the abutment for an easier insertion direction. Before moving from the parametric stage into the sculpt stage, it can be beneficial to make the abutment taller than needed with the large purple handle. After that is done, enter the sculpt stage and slice the top of the abutment off to create more room if you prefer a flat top as opposed to the standard V-cut design. This is done by using the plane cutting tool. While viewing the abutment from the buckle or lingual, use the measurement tools to see where you can achieve your desired occlusal space. Then click and drag across the abutment to show the tool at what height and angle you wish to make the cut. The handles that appear will allow you to change the angle of the newly planed abutment. Once the desired occlusal space is reached, you can now access the attachment settings. With the abutment flat wall tool set at 3 quarter millimeter radius, you can manipulate the tool to clear away part of the abutment and act as an anti-rotational flat wall. After that is done, smooth out the rough areas on the shoulder. After the sculpt stage, access the assembly stage, where the program combines your moves from the parametric and sculpt stages with the axis hole. Here you can double check your design by using the milling blank handle to make sure your design is within the millable area. Once satisfied with the design, click next on the upper left to generate the millable file, then click close. Thanks for watching this episode of CAD CAM Tools Tips and Tricks. If you'd like to see more videos, check out the Tips and Tricks column in Glidewell's Lab Perspectives magazine.